Hey, welcome. Today we're going to discuss the rotator cuff. Now, problems with the rotator cuff are some of the most common causes of pain around the shoulder. But why? Why the bad reputation? This video is going to discuss what the rotator cuff is, how we evaluate for rotator cuff problems, how they're treated, and last, why it's so critical to have any pain related to the rotator cuff evaluated and treated earlier rather than later. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. I'm Dr. Dan Tomaszewski, orthopedic surgeon at the Door Orthopedic Center at Door County Medical Center. And again, today we're gonna discuss rotator cuff problems. Now, what is that, the rotator cuff? Well, the rotator cuff, C-U-F-F, is a group of four muscles that start on your shoulder blade and come together as a single cuff around your shoulder, around the ball of the ball and socket joint. These are four tiny muscles that have a very important job. They come around the ball and hold the ball in the socket so that the big muscles of your shoulder can do all the power lifting, your pec muscle, your deltoid muscle, other muscles around your shoulder can do all the heavy labor. But that puts a lot of strain on your rotator cuff year after year of work and just day-to-day -day living. That puts a lot of strain on your rotator cuff. And the analogy that I use for people to really describe best what the rotator cuff is and why it's under so much strain is I kind of compare it to the knee on a pair of blue jeans. When you're 18 years old, your rotator cuff is like the knee on a brand new pair of blue jeans. It's tough, it's thick, it's resilient. But over time, years and years of work and just activity, just like those pair of blue jeans, that rotator cuff can get a little thin, maybe a little pilly, maybe a little frayed. Over time, it can get a small tear and maybe even a big tear. Again, just like those blue jeans, the analogy is pretty good. That just wears out over time. It doesn't take a significant injury when you're 60, 70, 80 years old to get a rotator cuff problem, to get a rotator cuff tear. Now, just like those pair of blue jeans, you can have an acute tear that you know is related to an injury. Maybe you rub your blue jeans across a nail and it accidentally rips the knee. Just like that with your shoulder, if you have an injury, you have a bad fall, a car accident, or you know, a dog pulls you on the leash or something, you can get a tear in your rotator cuff with an injury. But by and large, believe it or not, the most common thing that I see is people just don't really have an injury. Or maybe they have a very minor injury that's kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. And so over time, that rotator cuff wears and thins and frays, and you can develop a tear. Now, what symptoms do people have when they have a rotator cuff problem? Commonly, they have night pain. It's just sore at night, it keeps them up. It's a hard time sleeping. Maybe it's laying on it, maybe it's not, but they can just have pain in that shoulder at night. They also have pain with overhead activities, trying to lift my arm up and away from my side, particularly if you're using any weight in your arm, if you're trying to lift a gallon of milk away from your body. That can cause a lot of pain in your shoulder. Even just bringing your arm down from a forward elevated position. If I have my arm way up over my head and I try to bring it down, that shoulder can really ache. Now the pain from a rotator cuff typically involves the very side of the shoulder. Not necessarily the top of the shoulder where the rotator cuff lives or even the shoulder blade, but the side of the shoulder. That's the most common location of pain related to rotator cuff problems. Now, additionally, because these are muscles, some people experience weakness when the rotator cuff isn't working right. Just can't lift the way I used to. Or because of that rough and pilly surface and frayed surface, they can develop mechanical symptoms. My shoulder clicks more than it used to. I never remember that clicking like that before. All of those things, night pain, weakness, mechanical symptoms, difficulty with overhead maneuvers, bringing your arm down, any of those can be related to rotator cuff problems. Okay, so you have symptoms related to a rotator cuff problem or you're worried about a rotator cuff. What do we do to evaluate for that? How do we treat it? Well, initially, when people have more mild symptoms, maybe there's no weakness, but there's just pain in the shoulder or occasional aching or with certain activities, they, they have some discomfort. 
Many times the early symptoms, maybe that pilly nature of the rotator cuff or frayed, many times those things can be treated with conservative measures, whether it be an injection or ibuprofen, watching your activities, physical therapy, non-surgical measures. But as symptoms progress and the potential for a rotator cuff tear progresses, well then we need to be a little bit more proactive about it. When the rotator cuff tears, when it tears off of the bone, or when there's a hole in it, importantly, that never heals on its own. That's something that your body just can't recover from. There's no way for your body to take that rotator cuff and make it find its way back to where it's supposed to be on the ball and heal itself. And so once it's torn, it's torn. And over time, that tear can progress. Initially, when a rotator cuff tears, it's typically very fixable. That tear is just off of the bone and you can put it right back on the bone. But if you let it go longer, that rotator cuff can wither and retract and atrophy and turn a repairable problem into an irreparable problem. And so it's really important to get that treated sooner rather than later if you have those symptoms. Now, commonly, we need to get an MRI to evaluate for the extent of a rotator cuff problem. Is this just a minor inflammation or partial tear? Or is it a full thickness tear? Or is it an irreparable tear? We need to know that so we know exactly what we're treating. Now, what if you need surgery? What happens if that rotator cuff is torn? Well, fortunately, not all rotator cuff tears require surgery. Some people aren't very symptomatic. Some people may be lower demand, not need a lot out of the shoulder. Some people may have some medical problems that would preclude surgery. There are a number of different reasons why we might not suggest surgery on a rotator cuff tear. But if you're active and vigorous and healthy and your shoulder pain is keeping you down and you have a full thickness torn right off the bone rotator cuff tear, Surgery is almost always the right answer so that this doesn't turn into something bigger. Now, what is rotator cuff surgery? What is that like? Fortunately, almost always, rotator cuff surgery can be done in a minimally invasive fashion, just with an arthroscope. Taking little poke holes and with a camera looking underneath the skin and tying that rotator cuff back down. That's almost always done as an outpatient. And so it's a minimally invasive surgery that's done as an outpatient. But unfortunately, the recovery is substantial. Now, when we fix a rotator cuff, we're just putting stitches in it, right? We're just trying to get it to heal in a good position. But those stitches that we put in in the operating room don't make it heal. Your body has to knit that together. And so if we put those stitches in and everything is tied up, and you use that arm the next day, you're gonna just pull all those stitches out and you'll be doing the surgery for nothing. And so it's really important to immobilize the shoulder, give it a chance to heal so that it, we know it heals in a good position, you have a, the best chance of a good quality outcome. And so unfortunately, that means typically immobilization for a period of time, usually up to six weeks after surgery, where you can't use that arm. You're kind of one-armed for a while and that allows it to heal. Now, unfortunately, again, that immobilization and keeping you tied down, so to speak, that makes you stiff and that makes you weak because you're not using your arm. So then begins the process of more aggressive physical therapy, really regaining your mobility and strength. Most people are in therapy for a total of three months. Usually the first six weeks is really easy, rudimentary stuff, just stretching you out. The second six weeks is more aggressive, getting your mobility back and starting some gentle strengthening. Three months after surgery, most people can use their arm for routine activities like getting dressed or combing their hair or things like that. But you're not throwing fastballs and you're not swinging a hammer or climbing on ladders. That process is at least six months until that rotator cuff is strong enough that you can do those more heavy duty activities. But realize, just like that analogy with the pair of blue jeans, if we sew together the rotator cuff and we get it to heal, that's great. But just like that pair of blue jeans, you can get a tear right next door the next day. 
So it's always important to be a little bit conscious of what we're doing with our shoulder, not putting too much strain on that shoulder, maybe maintaining your physical therapy and home exercises long-term to keep that rotator cuff as healthy as possible. Okay, so that's rotator cuff problems and their treatment in a nutshell. Of course, there's many more details that we haven't discussed here now, but if you have any concerns about your rotator cuff, about shoulder pain, don't hesitate to contact us. That's what we're here for. We always love hearing from you. Okay, thanks for watching.